Howdy peeps, welcome back to the channel for something of a rather strange one for Sharpie. And yes, it's a ship, a floaty thing, big dull grey thing. No, I normally go, pa, not doing them, pa, not doing them. I tried one before, didn't like it, but no, like anything, you try it again. Tastes might have changed, you never know. So what we have here is Tamiya's Venerable, I, I, I use that in the correct term, uh, 1700th British Battleship, King George V, Waterline Series, number 125, from 1975. So this kit is a year older than me. Let's see how well it's fared in the intervening 45 years. So, open it up. It's a rather heavy box. There's a good reason for that. Now, I have already been through this once, so I've, I say been through it. I've taken everything out of the bag so we can save all that grief and hassle of rustling and rattling and staples stabbing in my fingers. Being Tamiya. So we have the waterline bottom of the hull. For some reason it's selling us at the scale and then you can put the name of the ship there in case you don't know. Big space there which is what takes the weight to weight it down because I'm guessing it's a rather light model. And the upper deck. And it fits together perfectly because it's just gone together. Um, there is some planking detail on there. Now, but at 1 700 at this scale, you're not expecting, you know, you're not expecting individual wood grain on the deck. And boom, boom, boom. everything appears to be nice and crisp and flash free. And about as good as I think you could probably make it. Especially when you consider the age of it. Now the portholes, or would they be port would you have portholes in a battleship? I wouldn't have thought so. There must be for some reason. Water drainage, I don't know. They're all opened up or at least recessed where the pins haven't gone through deep enough. And more proof it's 1975. Same down this side, we've got a bit of a bit of tape left on there, the two halves were taped together. And you can see where the citadel section of the ship was, because that's where the main armour bulge is. There's not really anything important in the front and rear section. Uh, well, it's, I say important, I mean there's, there's nothing that's going to explode and take the rest of the ship with it, let's put it that way. First sprue, which I happen to grab sprue B, but there you go. And I'm really going to suck at saying what these bits are, because I'm not a shipist. This time we will actually use the bits of the mini art dushka. No, it's still too small. We'll use a, use a cocktail stick that's been used for many things as a pointy. Um, look like anchors to me. <laughs> Pass. Anti aircraft gun batteries, perhaps. The um, derricks for the recon plane. More secondary gun batteries or anti air batteries, I would guess. Parts of the bridge. More gun stuff. Funnels. Do we have raised? I think we have raised. Yeah, we do have raised panel lines, but I'm not entirely sure. I think they may well actually be raised on the battleship because they'd probably overlap rather than leave gaps. Gaps on a floaty thing are a bad idea anyway, so you know. 
especially an armoured floaty thing, you don't want gaps for shells to get into. More teeny tiny little dinky bits. Move the sprue across a bit, try and get it in shot. Um, looks probably like part of the mast. Now, yep, yeah, we do have some what I call micro flashing. This is a tiny bit, nothing, nothing that you'd complain about on a new kit, let alone one that was forty odd years old. And the back of the sprue looks like the back of a sprue. Project pins in sensible places. Plenty of location parts. Yep. Looks good to me. Oh, excuse me. It's been one of them days. Lack of sleep and lack of nap. Now we come to the turrets and the ship's boats, as well as the missing part of the deck, which I'm guessing as, as the anchor chains moulded into it is the foredeck, rather than the after deck. So again, many, I say many, several smaller parts, so I have no idea what they are whole bunch of teeny tiny gun barrels which I'm guessing go in all kind of teeny tiny little mounts um, which will probably they would be the secondaries which I think five inch something like that maybe eight inch considering the size of the main battery guns on the King George I think it was 14 inch guns <laughs> yeah, when you start talking about 14 inch guns, you know how big the shells are going to be. Uh, the various ship's boats. It's one way to tell the difference between a ship and a boat. A ship has boats, a boat doesn't have ships. So, <laughs> there we go. Uh, and the, what I'm guessing is the after turret. And the front two turrets. This is a 424 on the gun formation. It was meant to be a 444, but it was causing problems with the weight, I believe. It was over the treaty limit, or it was just too top heavy, one or the other. There's, there have been several ships that uh, got into service, and then they found out they were too top heavy. The Atlanta class being one of them. Let's see, are they. Um, well, obviously not slide moulded in that direction. They're not got a hollow tip to them, but at this scale, this age of kit, I'm not going to complain about the gun barrels being solid moulded. Bunch of pass either either rubber dinghies or <laughs> something like that. Third sprue containing the nameplate, which yep, it has got a standy uppy bit on the back of it, so you can stand the nameplate in front of the ship. You have more of the mast, more of the uh, probably Bofors AA guns on these. I think was this the 40 mil Bofors, something like that. It's either the 20 or the 40. More parts of the bridge superstructure. Or well, the superstructure and the bridge. Pass more ships' boats. More fiddly little delicate parts. Lots of really small delicate fiddly parts. They're probably an aircraft guns. They probably will get snapped off. Uh, <laughs> again, I mean, I I can't really fault it as a kit. I mean, there are companies producing new tooled kits these days. Uh, this spruce is 76, so yeah. <laughs> well, as I say, there are companies producing new tool kits these days that don't look as good as this in the plastic. And obviously, we'll see how it goes together, but it's Tamiya, so I'm expecting probably quite well. <sighs> and yes, it's been in my house, so it's already got tobacco in it. Then we have, I wondered why the box was so heavy when I opened it. 
myself, why the hell is this little thing heavier than... Because... Honking great metal weight to weight it down. I'm, I'm guessing it is pretty light and would skate or slide off of a shelf quite easily. You know, we don't get any decals or stickers or flags or anything. But then I'm guessing at one 700 scale they would be pretty much worthless. Or <laughs> you wouldn't see them. Uh, so, actually plenty of bump about the ship. Me, 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 me. Does it say what size? So, yep, 10, 14 inch guns. Second area is four twin five and a quarters. Light anti aircraft, eight two barrel pom pom, or eight barrel two pounder pom poms. And I would have thought some bofers on there as well. General stats say 35,000 tons, 227 and a half metres long, which is nearly 700 foot. Maximum speed 30 knots, main guns 36 centimetres by 10. And then you compare that to the Yamato, which was 65,000 tons, 946 centimetre guns, and 263 metres long. But yes, so we have world's most annoying type of fold out instructions is all one long piece. We have our paint guide, which is buff, metallic grey, black, white grey, and grey. Yep, relatively simple enough to do. And the Construcciones. Uh, so drill a hole in two places if the guns are to be movable. B19 and 20 must be fixed lastly. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, no, it's a little bit busy. You know, the anti aircraft flat guns all going together. You know, it looks a little bit busy, but there's not, so there's not a huge amount to it, so soon go through. Get it built. Funnels, pom poms, bridge bays. Angles. And the main guns going together and going on, along with the boaty floaty bits and the planey bits and job done and probably at some point shortly after then the launchy launchy out the window bits because hey anyone who knows me and ships knows that's probably what's going to happen and that is completely why I went for a relatively old relatively cheap 1 700 scale rather than a big 1 350 or 200 because one of them won't fit out the window and it costs a lot of money. So, there we go. <sighs> Hopefully you've got over the shock of seeing me with a floaty thing. A grey floaty thing. Um, and maybe even enjoyed the video. Yeah, there's a chance you may have. Probably more likely not, but you know. Anyway. I will definitely be trying to build this. And paint it whether I do any videos I don't know because I'm a complete noob when it comes to ships so it would just be people laughing at me for being useless and old and crap but there we go don't forget to do the old likey subscribe notification belly uh, leave any comments down below if you've got anything to say about the ship video, questions to ask, all that good stuff. I do read them all. I try to reply to them all. For some reason, some I get a comment and then I go to reply to it and the comment doesn't show. I don't know whether someone's got something set in their settings or it's going to spam or... I don't know. I'm not that tech savvy. Anyway, enjoy your hobby, whatever it is. Peace out. 
rock on, stay safe, bye bye.